Welcome back to another world box video. My reaction to a new world box video. Your reaction to a world box video. Today we're picking up where we left off with Thomas's new kingdom on this new world. That's also an old world. This is Hubba's old world. And they're back, baby. What a journey they've been on. Well, all these kids don't remember the journey. They just got here. But uh, it's been quite a journey for the very few adults on this world. Running from war, running from starvation, fighting sand spiders the list goes on but alas here they are making a name for themselves on this new world and honestly this world doesn't look too bad for being struck by a thousand meteors in fact it pretty much just gave them a bunch of adamantine to work with so that's pretty cool i mean look at thomas for instance he's dripped the heck out like dude thomas where did you get those shoes man those are sick oh they were created by hick from normal planet 12 years ago bro you've gotta introduce me to hick man <laughs> No holding out on me. But yes, several years have now gone by on this new world and they've really started to rebuild. Look at them, building wood paths onto the beach because they hate getting sand in their toes. Honestly, same. Neither them nor I would have lasted a single moment on Sand Planet. But as they expanded further and further up the continent, something was made obvious, not to them, but to me and to you. They had merely assumed they were alone on this world but they hadn't really looked around to confirm that for there was also a cat on this island and actually well, three cats actually and a rat four cats five cats and also no rat um so that's something also did i forget to mention benjamin some of you might remember benjamin and if you don't remember benjamin then you better remember benjamin benjamin's up here trying to live his life in peace and he was here first well actually he was here second because hubba's kingdom was here first but then hubba left like a thousand years ago and while the people were gone benjamin showed up so technically he was here when no one else was here but he wasn't here first you know what i mean the point is benjamin was here living in peace before these noisy ruffians moved in and started building all sorts of nonsense and boy the amount of noise they're making it's really something he can hear it across the ocean or across this tiny little river here how does it make you feel benjamin honestly it's pretty annoying but i mean what am i gonna do about it i'm not some sort of maniac if they want to move in and make a bunch of noise that's on them i'm not happy about it but it is what it is, man. That's very mature of you, Benjamin. I appreciate that. Maybe everyone will get to live in harmony finally. Goodness gracious, I hope so. Thomas's kingdom is finally catching a break. They're living peacefully. The dark times are a long time ago, and man, they're growing food willy-nilly. Thomas just came by to check on them, I guess. I wonder what kind of king he is, you know? He seems like kind of a weirdo. He's just like standing in the jungle right now, secretly watching the army doing their training exercises. What are you gonna do next, Thomas? Oh, go to sleep. Okay, very cool. Anyway, it was around this time that something pretty weird that you wouldn't have expected, and honestly, I still can't believe it. And I'm the one that came up with this. And that is the moon moved right in front of the sun. Actually, this cloud uh, can't be here. Doesn't make any sense. Actually, no, it does. It's a space cloud. But yes, the moon moved right in front of the sun, causing what we in the business like to call a solar eclipse. This sent the world into an age of dark. No, really, it's called the age of dark. But Thomas didn't mind at first. He thought, this is cool. Now I don't gotta worry about getting sunburned. And don't ask me how crops are growing without any sunlight. That doesn't make any sense. But yeah, pretty much no difference here. Just uh, the same thing, but now it's dark. Who cares? Now you can take a nap at any time of the day. Isn't that great? Seems like better, honestly. For those of you that remember Benjamin from an older video, this next part won't surprise you, but please pretend to be surprised anyway. You see, Benjamin may be a chill dude during the daytime, but at night, oh no, not at nighttime. When it's dark out, Benjamin goes mad with madness. He puts on his red shirt and he really just goes crazy. Him and this frog have lived together in peace for 20 years probably. But I'm worried about what's gonna happen. Benjamin, that's your friend, your only friend. Benjamin, think about your actions. Your actions might have consequences. Don't look at me like that. You just killed your closest friend. Oh man, how could you? It's terrible, but honestly not that big a deal as long as Benjamin just stays on his island. Benjamin? Benjamin, where are you? Guys, where's Benjamin? Oh no, Benjamin. Where are you going? What are you planning on doing? Benjamin, please don't tell me you're about to do what I think you're about to do.
He just got someone's weapon and someone's helmet. Oh no, look at his kill count. 20, 21, 22. Benjamin, when does this stop? We must go tell Thomas about this. He must know. Thomas, there's a wild, tiny man named Benjamin. He's gone crazy. He's killing everybody on the north side of the island. Thomas, why you look like that? Oh, that's right. He can't hear me. I'm the narrator. Well, hopefully he figures it out soon because he's just chilling down here with a huge army and they have no idea. The village is burning. Benjamin is destroying everything. I can't believe it. They got to live in peace for like 30 seconds before something bad happened again. I feel so bad for them. I wish there was something I could do. I mean, something other than intervening with my god powers. I must just watch from a distance. Oh, those crops they worked so hard to grow. Just burning in an afternoon. Or is it morning time? I actually don't know. Benjamin's still out here destroying people. I hope that help comes soon. Oh yeah, baby. Thomas is here, and he brought the army with him. No way, he even brought the special forces. Oh, Benjamin is done now. Once this guy gets his hand on him. Look out, Benjamin. Your time is almost up. They marched upon Benjamin, but when they arrived to kill him, he was just chilling in the middle of a bunch of fire, just hanging out, completely non-violently. The army was here to obliterate him for what he'd done. Thomas was here because he'd been told that Benjamin was some sort of killer maniac, but Benjamin was just chilling out big style. He was just vibing, having a little bonfire. Benjamin walks over and starts talking to them. I just woke up from the craziest dream. There I was, just chilling on my island when suddenly I woke up in the ocean swimming towards an even bigger island and when I arrived I felt this desire to just kill everything in my path so I did I whacked this guy I punched this chicken I threw an axe at this other guy I shot a bow at a crab it was crazy I was just destroying everything I feel a little bad for this guy who's just on fire right here there we go all right you don't have to be on fire for the whole story you though I'm sorry you gotta stay on fire do you guys think dreams have meaning and what do you think my dream means? Do you think it has to do with my distrust of other people and how I constantly feel like it's me against the world despite there being probably a lot of people out there that would be nice to me if I just gave them a chance? Why do I always push people away instead of letting them get close to me? What is my deal? Your dream might also have something to do with your fear of moving forward in life. The violence could represent your self-sabotaging nature where instead of accepting opportunities you would rather destroy them so that you can always live peacefully forever alone on your island and never truly apply yourself. Wow, that's really something to think about. Thanks, mister. And also, that wasn't a dream. That really happened. You killed hundreds of people. Oh, no, not again. Just then, a rain cloud moved in and put all the fire out, putting Benjamin back into darkness. Oh, boy. You know what happens next. Absolute destruction of all humanity. Thomas was confused about what was going on here, but he knew he had to do something about it. He was the king, after all. He brought these people here. On the walk home, Thomas had an epiphany. Oh, Benjamin's just sleeping, but he wakes up when it's bright out. So the fire woke him up because it was bright, and he's been in madness crazy mode for so long because the moon is blocking the sun. It makes so much sense. This plot isn't even nonsense, Thomas thought to himself. And honestly, I agree. This plot makes perfect sense. Thomas knew what he had to do. He didn't like it, but he knew what he had to do. He got straight to work on fixing up the old rocket ship. Honestly, I think this thing still runs. Thomas told his people he needed to fly this rocket ship up into space so he could move the moon out of the way of the sun so that the sun could shine again on their world and wake up Benjamin, thus saving the people. Um, can I come with you? No. Why not? Because I said so. Please? Thomas needed to do this alone, but he couldn't tell them why yet. Before Thomas left on his mission, he wanted to speak to his son Owen one more time. Owen, I know we never really saw eye to eye, partially because you're six inches tall and I'm 91 years old. But I want you to know, you've got heart, kid. You're gonna be fine. Someday you'll lead this kingdom, and I want you to lead with courage and bravery. Or something, I don't know. I probably wasn't a very good king, to be honest. So hopefully you do better than me. Anyway, I'll see you around, sport. I gotta go move the moon. And there they went. It was time to save his kingdom. Let's get ready for liftoff. I'm ready for this. 91 years of life, constantly saving my kingdom. What's one more time? And so Thomas flew through space. Headed straight for the moon. At super, super duper speeds. What the heck? 
Why are the stars flying by in cursive? Thomas was headed straight for the moon. Unbeknownst to these alien people, but I mean, no big deal, right? Thomas goes to move their moon? They won't even notice it happened, right? I mean, it's them that are in the way of the sun after all. Not Thomas's fault. Just one thing. Move the moon. That's not possible. Think about that for five seconds. How's Thomas gonna move the moon? He's not. Thomas lied to his people, and he lied to little Owen. Although Owen didn't know what he was saying, so I think it's fine. Thomas isn't headed up here to move the moon. Thomas is up here to do the only thing he can do. Destroy the moon. Explode the moon into a million pieces, thus revealing the sun behind it. You sure about this, Thomas? I'm so old. Dang, never thought I'd see the day. Thomas has truly lived a full life. This was it. Thomas was almost there. In fact, he was very, very close. And right before he plunged into the moon to destroy it for all time, he had one final thought. Wait, is this gonna work? Oh my gosh. I think it worked. I think he did it. He blew up the moon. I didn't think it would actually work, but it did. The sun is no longer being blocked by the moon. The solar eclipse is over. Little did they know that they could have probably just waited a couple more days and it would have been over on its own, but oh well. Thomas is always the go-getter kind of guy, you know? He likes to be the one to save the day. Anyway, the sun came back out, the world got bright again, and most importantly, Benjamin stopped being a killer psycho. Guys, I had the weirdest dream again. I had a dream I got 228 kills, and also I stole some guy's shoes. Also, I got married. What the heck? <laughs> Sheesh. Let's go, dude. To who? Where's my wife at? Oh my gosh. She's beautiful. I'm such a lucky guy. Just one problem. Without the moon keeping things in balance, the world turned into total disarray. Earthquakes, storms, even Owen was getting flung around by a giant tornado. What a day it's been for him, huh? This planet was wrecked. Thomas saved it from one threat, but brought along another. Classic Thomas, huh? That's kind of his thing, huh? Intervene, save everyone, but get them into a worse situation. But you know what? He tried his best. Hopefully his son, Owen, is a little smarter than he is. Oh, nap time for Owen. <laughs> little does he know that someday it might be his responsibility to save these people once again, whenever he grows up, finally. Owen, feels like you've been a baby forever. When are you gonna grow up, dude? Oh, you grew up, and you're bald. All right, Thomas would be proud to see what a strong man you've grown into. A strong, bouncing man. What a time it's been, huh? I wonder what's gonna happen next. Also, looks like Benjamin left. I feel like the real winner here is Benjamin. He got off pretty easy for killing almost 300 people, and now him and his lemon wife can go live happily ever after somewhere else and leave this world to ruin. Owen knows they can't stay here, but he has no idea how he's gonna save these people. He wishes there was an easy way to get off this planet and onto another one. If only that was possible. Oh wait, that is possible.